When I first met Jack Webb, he was convinced that because of what I did on a football field, he was convinced I knew how to act. I'm not sure how he made that parallel. <laughs> this is what I wanted to do, and uh, it was not an easy decision when you're 20 years old and they're throwing that kind of money around. All those guys, my teammates who went and played, made more money <laughs> in six months than I made in four years. Yeah, well, 240 Robert, there's there actually a, it was never really a series, but it was a, it was a kind of a Jack Webb pilot venture off of Adam-12 called right. Sam. And, and then it sprung into something called 240 Wild, which was another, that was off of Emergency. I mean, these, these were just segments that I did of Adam-12 uh -huh. and, 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 of, and of Emergency that were like, you know, Jack had this way of thinking, well, you know, we'll do this one about a guy and his patrol dog. We'll do this one about uh, animal control officers. You know, and um, but really, I mean, your memory, my memory, it, it's like 240 Robert Flamingo Road and, and mm -hmm. St. Elsewhere. I didn't specifically know that that, that was the eventual plan. I, I knew that playing the kind of stakes I was asking them to play was was playing with that, and 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 I knew that that from the very beginning of saying to the writers on that show, "Gee, I want you to get excited about me as a character and really get some stuff to do here," um, because I'd been there three years and I'd seen other yeah. characters come and go that 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 I was playing with fire to a degree. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, it was very much out in the open. It was a great place to work, and, and, and I enjoyed my time there so much. It was a great place to grow. And, and when that all ended, um, even though that was a pretty scary time, and I didn't have anything else waiting. It seems to me that, that the people that I seek out, uh, I ask a lot of questions. I learned about that in school, you know? and, and UCLA high and school, before. grade and school, I've always asked questions. And I've always asked them of people who I think can give me answers. Um, and I listen to the answers, you know, and I try to learn from them. And Carl Malden lives down the street from me. He came up to me after watching Deliberate Stranger and says, you should do Shakespeare. He says, the pentameter of your voice is right for it. You can do it. And geez, that Carl Malden's telling me that is a real pat on the back, except I know very little about it other than what I remember from 10th grade in English class, you know. Um, I'd love to do that. I'd love to stretch those avenues. But I'm also, I'm finding so very many things to learn and to grow uh, with right now without worrying about that. I mean, I'm making transitions from, from features to television to stage and trying right. to keep those all alive. And to do that, there's a tremendous amount of time and only so much time in a day. Um, I like being busy. I've always been conscious of stretching. That's what I've always wanted to do. I mean, what People Magazine wants to put on their cover is their own business. I mean, that's how I feel. If they still want to do that in 35, 40 years, great, then we'll talk about it. Right. And I'll probably make it then because they usually put Sexiest Man and the People Who Die on there. That's how it works. <laughs> um, but, 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 but other than that, the reality for me has always been the work part of it. And I mean, no one was batting on my door after Deliberate Stranger and saying, hey, let's get Harmon to do the next light comedy. He's just played a serial killer. Right. Except Carl Reiner. And Carl Reiner That's came right. to me and said, hey, I think you can play this role. And I said to Carl, I appreciate that, but I don't think I can play it. I don't know that I can play it. If it's a very broad base, stand-up comedic kind of portrayal you want right. from this, there's a few actors out there who play this kind of role all the time, over and over again, and right. go get one of them to do it. He said, uh-uh. He said, I want you. I have found the right guy. I want a leading man who knows where the joke is. And I said, great, look, I'll tell you what. Carl Reiner has that kind of faith in me and thinks I can pull that off. I am more than willing to give my trust to him and, and take a shot with this film. You know, they're different kind of choices and, and, and hopefully, you know, you do the presidios with the, the big and, you know, the kind of advance that that will have and the kind of power that will have at the box office to, to something you truly care about, like a stealing home. And, and we all did that one because we loved it, not because we were making any money. Um, I know that I'm an actor. I mean, the truth of the matter is I've never seen what other people see in their perception anyway. And, and so instead of trying to figure out what that is, I just worry about looking in the mirror to myself and what I shave in the morning. That's as far as and deep as it gets. I don't know. 
I, I, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd like to think that the role can dictate that, you know, and uh, I certainly uh, all during my years found things worthwhile playing on television and, and, and I don't put much stock in the stigma of going back. I don't see it as a step back, you know, so we'll see. Uh, certainly it's been busy and, and the yeah, feature, features are, uh, are, are coming kind of hot and heavy right now, but um, I never say never. Switching around and, and, and making them guess out there a little bit is okay with me.